Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Ask the Imam show. This is Gary Payne, Imam Mosri. Thank you for coming back again. I'm glad to be here. I wanted to talk to you about the holy books. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of holy books, and I'd like to ask about the holy books that the Muslims, or Islamically, that you guys follow or read after. Well, our holy book is the Quran, uh, spelled either K-O-R-A-N or Q-U-R-A-N. Um, and it means the reading or the readable scripture. And uh, it is in Arabic. The Quran consists of 114 chapters. And uh, it covers all kinds of topics about God, the oneness of God, about the angels, the prophets. It covers topics of, uh, of science. It covers uh, morality, social ethics. And it prescribes a lifestyle or um, a program for people to grow in their faith. But what's interesting about the Quran that it actually confirms uh, previous scriptures, the Torah that Moses has received, and the Gospel or the Injil that Jesus received from God. Recognizes these two prior revelations as uh, revelations from God, and that a Muslim is part of his or her faith, articles of faith, to believe not just in the Quran, but that the other previous books were actually also revealed from God. Well, I wanted to ask you a question, actually. I, I uh, kind of did a little CIA investigating, and I got uh -huh. a Quran translated in English. And sometimes we talked about this before, about the translation not being proper. Uh -huh. But I was kind of thrown back. It mentioned, if I'm correct, under this translation, one that I was looking at, Jesus a lot. Yes, well, uh, the the last prophet before Muhammad was Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, about five, six hundred years earlier. So uh, in the Quran, Jesus is mentioned 33 times, uh, and that really corresponds with the years, number of years he lived here yeah. on earth, and uh, talks about his mother, his family. It talks about the the mission of Jesus, th which was to do a re reformation of the previous uh, revelations that came to the different prophets in the children of Israel. And those uh, like Moses, Aaron, David, Solomon, Zacharias, John, and many other prophets. So uh, the message of Jesus was not an entirely new message. It's confirming the Torah, but also making adjustments to it and relaxing some of the laws that were strict before the revelation of the gospel. Well, this was leading into some stuff that I was reading, but I didn't notice it biblically. Uh, there's a book, if you've studied all the, the books, the religious books, uh, called Revelations. And this is really about the end of times, as we would call it, and uh, as I grew up listening to. But I didn't notice that in the Quran, talking about the end times. But I do believe, if I'm correctly, when I was reading, that you guys are still expecting Jesus to come back for Judgment Day. Yeah, so uh, the Muslim holy book, the Quran, is honestly very different from the Bible in the sense the Bible has both the Torah and the Gospel and many other books, the books of different prophets as well as letters that Paul, 13 letters that Paul wrote to different communities. It has books of poetry and, and books of history. Um, the Quran is f just the Word of God and it is uh, discussing the commandments, discussing prophets and laws, but it doesn't have in it uh, something equivalent to Revelation where such prophecies and such, uh, you know, gloom and doom is not there. Uh, yes, there is mention of the end of time in the Quran. There is mention of life after death and heaven and hell. But uh, 
it doesn't have the these prophecies that dominate in Revelation. Well, for Judgment Day, how Islamically is it for Judgment Day? Well, it's a separate topic, really. Uh, but to sort of briefly talk about it, uh, we believe in afterlife. We believe that whatever we do in this world, we are held accountable by God, and we will be face to face with God in the hereafter and be held, uh, you know, we have to pay for what we did here. And we have to receive rewards for the good things we did here. So uh, for I know for many people, uh, they don't believe in af afterlife. But f for us in the Quran, it's one important pillar that gets repeated again and again throughout the Quran that there is an afterlife. Heaven or hell? There's heaven and hell. So w we're doomed for one, so to speak. We're going to either go to heaven yeah, or Yeah, you can uh, basically, based on what you do in this life, choose where you're going to be in the end. But the Quran gives, interestingly, more details about heaven and hell than is in the Bible. So we have uh, detailed descriptions of what heaven is like and also detailed description of what hell is like. So it is a uh, fair warning to us that uh, we, we wouldn't be able to say, oh, I don't know. It's not left ambiguous. It is detailed in such a way that it makes you actually, on one hand, fear to go to hell. Sure. On the other hand, it makes you really work hard to go to heaven by doing good things. But I'd like to ask you, and I'm sorry to be blunt like this, but uh, I've been told and I've heard if I go to heaven and I'm a Muslim, I get 70 virgins. That could make a lot of people become Muslim tomorrow morning. Yeah, but it's false. <laughs> uh, that's a, a fabricated story. Okay. The fact is that uh, nowhere in the Quran does it say that you're going to get 70 uh, versions. And this is, uh, you know, circulated by, as a recruiting tool, by some terrorist groups and also by the media. But it doesn't have any such foundation in the Quran. So it's not authentically with Islam? No. The Quran is okay. very clear that. Um, you're going to be rewarded for what you have done and punished for what you have done wrong. So it, it's based it on that and you know you don't have one single action that gives you something like that. I mean this is uh, doesn't make much sense anyway. Being a martyr for Islam doesn't give you this? Being a martyr is a, is a great thing when you defend your country or, you know, if, say, our country here, the United States, was attacked and we uh, defended it and died in defense of country or home or family, uh, that is uh, considered a big deal. It's, it's a good thing. But it has no relationship to this idea that you go and have some 70 virgins that <laughs> That sounds like more the a Hollywood plot than uh, well Islam. I, the first time I heard that I was trying to wondering how can you have time to worship God if you're with seventy virgins <laughs> made no sense to me either so that's, true. that's why I want to ask you personally so I am um, I do appreciate your time and thank you for that I don't mean to be humorous and guys if you have any comments or questions please leave them at the bottom and see you the next time